log on early. To Okay, I'd like to welcome everybody to the regular meeting of the Pickleweed Advisory Committee of March 3rd, 2022. The time is 7.03 p.m. And I invite Becky to make a roll call, please. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Salvador Avalos. He's absent. Miguel Hau Gutierrez. I don't think I see Miguel on here either. Absent. Nancy Palacios. Present. Thank you. Kate Sprague. Present. Okay. Uh, Janet Tanchez is absent today. She let us know earlier. Rosa Vasquez. Present. All right. Luis Yaust. Luis no, Motion. No, Present. she's waving. <laughs> All right. Um, Haro Sabalas is absent. And then our Commissioner Ariel Gutierrez is also absent this evening. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to, like to let the committee know that Ariel will no longer be our representative from the Park and Rec Commission. Um, yesterday, they did uh, uh, nominate Mark Machado, will be representing for the rest of this year, and then they will pick another one for the next calendar year. Um, mm. So Ariel, unfortunately, had some conflicts and, and couldn't do it. She regretted that because she very much enjoyed her participation. So uh, we'll be sorry to see her go. I'd also like to note that uh, Craig Verme is here, our Assistant Library Recreation Director. And then we have some guests that we'll introduce as we get further into the meeting. So I'd like to invite Becky to please explain how the public can participate in this evening's agenda. All right, good evening, everyone. Viewers are welcome to provide public comment online through Zoom or telephone. If you are watching this meeting through Zoom, please select the participants button and select raised hand if you wish to speak. If you are participating by telephone and wish to speak, please press star nine. When it is your turn to speak, you will be notified by the host inviting you to participate. You will need to press star six to unmute yourself. Once you are unmuted, you will have three minutes to provide your comments. Okay, thank you, Becky. Um, and I'd like to know if there's any amendments to this evening's agenda. Um, if I could do a thing, Nancy, do you have any amendments? No. All right, Kate? No. Thank you. Rosa? No. no. Okay, and Louise? No, thanks. Great. Okay, and the first agenda item is uh, approved regular meeting minutes of January 1st, 2022. Um, I invite any questions or comments from the board members, and we'll again go through, and Nancy? Present. Do you have any any amendments or anything to the uh, Oh, sorry, minutes? no, I don't. Okay. <laughs> um, Kate? No, but they're June 1st, right? June 1st. What did I say? Okay. I think January, but I might have oh. misheard you. March. It's been a long day. It feels like it was January. Okay. Just June double 1st. checking. Thank, thank you for correcting. Yes. Yep. Great. Rosa? No, not no. Thank you. Okay. And then, um, sorry, Louise? No. Uh, corrections, no. Okay. And is there anybody from the public that would like to make a comment on the minutes of June 1st? I do not see any raised hands, Steve. Okay. So I request a motion and a second to approve the minutes of January 1st, 2022, please. I approve to, I approve uh, the minutes of June 21st. Okay, Nancy, thank you. Do you have a second? My second. Thank you, Kate. And Becky, if you please stay cool. All right. Um, Nancy Palacios. Yes. Present or? <laughs> Approve. Approve. Okay. Approve. <laughs> Kate Sprague. Approve. Rosa Vasquez. Approve. And Louise Yaust. I approve. All right, thank you. Motion passed. Thank you. 
you very much. Okay, now for public comment. Um, this is the time for members of the public to make any comments they'd like to regarding any item that is not listed on the agenda. All right, if you're watching this meeting through Zoom, please select the participants button and select raised hand if you wish to speak. Once you are unmuted, you will have three minutes to provide your comments. I do not see any raised hands, Steve. Okay, so I will close public comment and then uh, we will go on to our presentations. So our first presentation tonight is our public art review board presentation from Craig Verme, our assistant library recreation director. So Craig, take it away. Okay, I'm gonna take a second to share my screen. Hi everyone. Um, thanks for being here this evening. Uh, we wanted to share some information about the new public art review board. Uh, and particularly, uh, we want to share an overview of how the Pickleweed Advisory Committee will play a role in uh, reviewing public art for the city moving forward. I uh, just want to double check. Can everyone see my screen okay at this point in time? Yes. A thumbs up here. That's great. So. So there's an accompanying staff report for this as well, an agenda report with some additional information, but I wanted to provide an overview and kind of set the framework for how this committee will be involved in this process. Um, back in, let's see if I can get my screen to, there we go. Back in 2021, uh, City Council directed staff to develop a, a process for reviewing public art proposals. Um, I wasn't here at that point in time. I've been with the city for about two months, but my understanding is that uh, the process previously was was a little cumbersome. It took a long time, uh, involved a lot of steps. There were some fees associated with that that were quite steep to propose public art. And so uh, the city wanted to take an opportunity at ways that we might be able to be more efficient and more streamlined in the process. So nice. we developed a, a, a community group, a couple of community groups to pilot a review process for that. Uh, the Canal Arts Initiative was involved and San Rafael Social Justice Community Art Group was involved. And from that pilot process, uh, we learned some lessons. We, we took the best practices from that, as well as from what other agencies have been doing with their public art programs and developed a public art review program. Uh, there's three prongs to that public art review program. Uh, the first is the public art review board. Uh, that board right now is still in the process of being formed. Uh, mm -hmm. That will be comprised of three at-large members. Uh, the interviews for those at-large members are uh, on Monday, August 8th, coming up right around the corner. Uh, there will also be two members uh, that will be uh, designated from other committees in the city. One will be designated from the uh, Design Review Board. Uh, they will be having a meeting in, it's, it's shifted a couple of times. I believe their meeting will be coming up in early September to hopefully designate a member uh, that will represent the design review board. Uh, and then another member from the uh, Park and Recreation Commission, which was, uh, that individual was selected. And so we have someone that will be representing the public art review board from that committee. So that's one prong is the board itself. Uh, those members of that board will meet quarterly uh, or on an as needed ad hoc basis based on when proposals are received. So what they'll be doing is they'll be reviewing proposals as they are received. Uh, and there is a process that's been laid out for what they'll do to review the public art uh, with some selection criteria in mind. They'll be using those criteria to determine whether that art best meets the city's needs and uh, will be approved and move forward. So as part of that process, uh, really the goal here for the review board is to help advise city council on which public art installations are, are suitable for the city of San Rafael. As I mentioned, there's that five member committee, uh, as well as a non-voting city council liaison from the relevant district that that art would be installed. And then in addition to that, uh, there is a role of the Pickleweed Advisory Committee. Um, I wanted to share this, this flow chart here to give an idea of uh, when a proposal is received, the steps that would happen at that point in time. So first, the, the artist or the group or the organization would submit their proposal. 
uh, we are asking that proposals are received at least eight weeks prior to the Public Art Review Board meeting. At that point in time, staff would then review any proposals to make sure that they're complete, that they're eligible. We would work with our other departments to gather information to make sure that uh, we could answer any questions about the logistics, any maintenance or safety issues uh, that would pertain to the installation. And a lot of that would really depend on what type of an installation was being proposed and coming our way. Uh, so following that staff review, uh, assuming that the proposal was complete and eligible, we would then uh, add that to the Public Art Review Board agenda for review. They'd review that submission. Uh, if it was a short-term proposal, the Public Art Review Board would have the opportunity to approve, reject, or request additional information. Uh, short-term proposals generally are probably less than one year is what we're looking at. Uh, Longer-term proposals, uh, longer than one year, uh, would then have an opportunity to go to either City Council directly, if not at the Pickleweed uh, Park or Borough, Com Borough Community Center. Uh, council could then consider that proposal and make a recommendation, or if the art pertains to Pickleweed Park or uh, AJBCC, uh, the Pickleweed Advisory Committee, you would have the opportunity to then review that proposal and make recommendations of your own. And, and that's why we wanted to share this process with you so that uh, you understood that some of these proposals may begin coming your way very soon as we uh, get this review board started. So what would you do to review the work? Uh, one of those prongs, as I mentioned before, was the selection criteria. Uh, some of the things that uh, we are asking for when reviewing any public art would be uh, assessing whether the project is ready, uh, assessing the qualifications of the artists or the teams, uh, is there adequate funding, um, has the proposal gone through community engagement? Um, I believe uh, the next presentation that's going to be happening right after me is, is maybe part of that community engagement process, not necessarily part of the, the formal review process yet, but still part of that early community engagement. Uh, maintenance, the design, and does the, does the art represent the diversity of the city of San Rafael? Um, so again, your, your role in this, if public art projects are proposed uh, at Pickleweed Park or Albert J. Burrell Community Center, uh, those would be re referred over to you for review and to uh, review that along those lines of the, uh, the selection criteria. Uh, you'd have an opportunity to make a recommendation at that point in time. So uh, that's just a summary. Again, there's that agenda report that supplements this, and uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions at this point in time, if you had any. Great, thank you, Craig. Uh, we'll go through our list just to check on the committee members. Nancy, do you have any questions? No, I don't have any questions, but that's pretty exciting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Kate, how about you? Um, I just have one question and one comment. The comment is I really appreciate the distinction between short term and long term and the ability to move a short term proposal through faster. And my one question is uh, just about how many proposals are typically received or would be received or are anticipated to be received a year. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, would you like me to go to respond to this right away? Sure. Yeah, please. Yeah. So uh, great question. I think we're we we don't know. I think it's really up to the community to determine uh, how many proposals come our way. You know, this is brand new for us. I think uh, the pilot project uh, was was great to see how that might work for the city. I think we're really excited to kick this off and hopefully have a streamlined efficient process. I think, you know, I've been here for two months and, you know, the conversations I've had with some of the key stakeholders and individuals from the community, I do know there's an interest in submitting proposals for public art. And so I'm excited to see what could potentially materialize as we get this off the ground and get it started and really you know, put legs underneath it. It's, it's been a little slow. I think we're, we're getting to the point where we're now looking at the first public art review board meeting being September 27th. So that really would be the first opportunity to get any proposals up. Again, we're, we're hoping that we'd have at least eight weeks of advance notice for those first proposals. And then following that first meeting, um, uh, we are hoping to meet quarterly. So uh, it really just depends on what the community's desire is to submit proposals, to send them our way, and to start working on those types of projects. 
Uh, Rosa, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, not just very moment. And Louise. Hope you're muted, Louise. The funding will solely come from the city or will it be multiple sources? Um, funding isn't defined. I think at, at this point in time, um, the city does not have any funding dedicated to public art in the city. And so I think generally what we would be looking at is does the uh, does the proposal include some component that describes where the funding will be coming from? Oh. Um, that does not necessarily you know, exclude the possibility that the city may take on funding for future projects. But at this point in time, we don't have any funding available for public art. Okay. So that means you'd be dependent on grants to start. Yeah, I think it really I think it would really depend upon the, you know, the group, the artist, the organization that was bringing forward that proposal to determine right. how they were were planning to fund that. Um I know we've seen some some initial, you know, proposals and conversations that have come our way that involve grant funding, uh but there could be other opportunities for funding as well. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Thank you. Now I'd like to open it up to public comment if anybody has any questions or comments regarding this presentation. Becky. Thank you, Steve. If you're watching this meeting through Zoom, please select the participants button and select raised hand if you wish to speak. Once you are unmuted, you will have three minutes to provide your comments. And we do have a hand up, Steve. Um, it looks like Marina Palma. Let me get my timer ready here for Maria. All right. Okay, Marina, whenever you're ready. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. It is uh, it's nice to be here. Yeah, I can see the timer. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just wondering, you know, we have a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, colleagues from Voces del Canal in this chat, but uh, we don't have access to interpretation to Spanish, and we don't have access to the chat. Is there any way you can help us with that? Hmm. Yeah, I think that's that's definitely something I can take a look at. Um, I'm going to have to have some conversations uh, with our department and see what resources we have available. <laughs> That we might be able to make accessible to really help with some of the uh, the uh, interpretations, the, the language barriers that we might need to help make sure that these opportunities are accessible to the full community down there in Canal. So I'd, I'd be happy to look into that, Marina, and I appreciate that comment. Thank you. Thank you so much, and we're, we are here to support uh, the presentation that Rich is going to give. So uh, you're going to be hearing from us. So how is how is how is it going to take place? Because my colleagues, they want to be able to share. Is one of you uh, bilingual to interpret? No, I'm wondering if there's somebody. Marina, would you be available to, to translate to us? I love you so much. Of course. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I, I thank you so much. Yes, you know what? Um, it's, been, it's been years since this has been necessary, but we, we should be um, prepared for uh, translations. But it's uh, typically at these meetings, it has not been needed for many, many years. So I understand. We, it's, probably my bad, it's my bad no. for not calling ahead of time. But um, no. yeah, thank we, you so much. We respect that. And we're glad you're willing to step up for us because everybody's voice is very important to us. So thank, thank you. you. Are there any more comments about the specific presentation that Craig gave? I do not see any other raised hands, Steve. Okay, then I'd like to close public comment. And Craig, I want to thank you for your presentation. Yeah, thank you, Steve. Thanks, everyone. Sure. Now we're going to go on to item 3B. It's a Canal Arts Public Mural presentation, and Rich is here to, to give us this presentation, and Becky is going to want to share his screen. Go ahead, Rich, you're on mute right now. Thank you, Steve. Sorry, that mute button. <clears throat> well, they, the uh, presentation we have for you now is really informative. It's to share some thoughts with you about the process and about 
the specific location that we're proposing. Um, I think the, the submittal that we sent in had been sent to you in your packet. So you, you're probably familiar with most of what we're, what we're presenting. Um, but I want to say just a word about the typical public art project that begins with the identification of a, of a place. It's, it's either talking to a building owner, and in this case, the, we treat the pickle weed advisory committee as the building owner, looking for your thoughts on the use of the building. And then it goes from there, once that's been secured, uh, we, we have to find funding to do a project uh, that comes in from various sources. In the case of what we're presenting to you tonight, we do have funding that's come from the county. And this is actually for a, pro a mural project that was supposed to have been completed this past spring, but the city requested that we postpone it and delay it to be able to go through the, the new process with the, with the uh, review board. And we're hoping that that all does come together on September 7th and we can have a presentation to that board at that time. The, uh, the next step after that, we have a, we have a venue is that we select artists to do the work and we develop a theme where we develop the actual conceptual art that comes from the community in our case. In other cases, it may not, but we are community-based. And uh, I think what I'd like to do is just to share a screen with you. Which? The screen I'm seeing right now is not changing. Can you see that? Yes, we see a picture of uh, Canal Alliance's lobby and this is borderline. Yeah, however. Well, for some reason here, I cannot change these images. So I'm not sure I can present this to you. Mm. No, nothing's working here. Yeah, no, unfortunately, all, all I can show you is the very first image, which was the beginning of the canal arts when we began doing mural art with Canal Alliance. Um, I wanted to show you a little bit more about the history of canal arts and what we have done, who we are, and, and uh, so on. But that, that's really kind of peripheral to our presentation to you, which comes right down to the image that you have seen in the package, which shows the uh, the wall to the right of the entry to the borough center. And that's been something that's been a discussion between us and, and our artists and people in the community uh, who I think are, are prepared to comment on that tonight. Because it's the it's kind of the welcoming space into the borough center. And this the mural that we want to create, which uh, we, we haven't any artwork to show you yet, but we can tell you, and I think it's, that was in your packet as well, that the theme of the mural is the canal community. And it touches on, it will touch on the, uh, the history of the people in the canal, the, uh, the immigration experience, and canal community cultures. And they're mixed and varied, as you know. So as a portrayal of the, the most, the most uh, frequent uh, community members that use the borough center, 
we think it's an appropriate thing to show something of their history and culture. Um, since I can't show you an image right now, I guess I, I'll, I'll uh, ask for your comments, what, what your reaction is to that. Thank you, Rich. I'm sorry, the uh, technical difficulties there. But um, I appreciate all that you're doing. Uh, I think Canal Arts has made some beautiful contributions to the community in a relatively short time that you've been formed. Um, you know, it's such a welcome coming in when you're a Bella McKerner and having the welcome uh, mural and, and all the others you've done. So thank you for that. I just want to take a minute just to provide a little bit of background uh, for both the committee and those people in the public, and then we'll open it up for, for public comment. The city and the canal community have always appreciated cultural art, um, especially at the Albert J. Boyle Community Center, and has a long desire of increasing the cultural expression. After uh, extensive community input at the time, when renovated, the large Albert J. Boyle Community Center was intentionally painted pickleweed green to blend in with the environment. Caution was taken both inside and out to avoid territorial colors, and internal walls were painted white to be crisp, clean, and welcoming to a large, diverse variety for programs, rentals, events, and celebrations, both canal-centered and beyond. Of course, community interests can change over time, and perhaps now there's a different desire. Recent community input uh, conducted by the city identified a public mural, among other things, to be incorporated into the Pickle Week Park enhancement project. Previous interest um, increasing, of increasing art in the canal or the center included expanding the current picture rails down the center's hallway to make uh, able to display more rotating artwork from the center's programs, community partners, and events such as the Via de los Motos murals. Placing a mural on the back of the soon to be renovated Pickleweed Park restroom, which also serves as the backdrop to, for private community events in the picnic area. And although not city owned, community groups can also seek permission to paint the murals on the two green transformers in the parking lot, as was done in similar transformers downtown San Rafael. We saw a picture of that in Craig's presentation. As Canal Arts conducts a community input this evening, as part of the application process for the Public Art Review Board, committee members will now have the opportunity, as does the audience, to um, share their personal feelings about the project. The Pickle Week Advisory Committee will not be offering a recommendation this evening, but potentially at a future meeting, we hope to uh, be able to do that as part of the city's public arts review process. So now we'll go through and we'll see if Nancy, do you have any comments or questions? Um, I don't have any questions, but um, I think this is fantastic. And I, I'm a true believer that murals just express so much of the history of a community. It reminds me of um, the Mission District in San Francisco. The murals just say so much uh, about the history of, of that community. So thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Okay. I appreciate the background, both from Canal Arts and also from you, Steve, regarding the choices that were made when in painting the community center. And I think those will be important to consider along with uh, thinking about the maintenance of it and hearing from the city it, as part of the application process of what kind of maintenance might be required or how it might be impacted by traffic in the area and things like that. Great. Uh, Rosa. Any questions or comments? Well, I want I want to say uh, thanks to give thanks to Rich for uh, presenting this this information to us, and um, we're hoping that um that um this will be something that some everyone will be looking forward to. So, uh, look the the uh the picture that he drew looks very amazing, but we will see what everyone says. Thank you. Thank you. And Louise. Oh, you're muted. Uh, yeah. Okay. I support this 100%. I was just in the city on Sunday and noticed the wow, Ben has got to step up and put more out. <laughs> and this is This is what's happening here. So that's great. Um, I presume that um, the murals you paint will somehow be safeguarded from graffiti potential? How yes. do you do that? 
Yes, we uh, we always put a, a protective Vanguard coating on it that's that's uh, easily washed if someone should happen to tag it. But there's an interesting thing about this. The uh, there's a lot of experience with with murals that are of high quality, which are respected and left alone. Murals that are dashed off are very often uh, vandalized. But we do have a protective coating on it, which also protects it from the, from the weather and ultraviolet uh, exposure. Oh, uh, I see. Okay, sounds good. Hmm. Okay, now I know we have quite a few members of the public who are interested in uh, expressing their opinion too. So, uh, Becky, if you would please open it up for public comment. Yes, if, um, if you're watching this meeting through Zoom, please select the raise hand or please select the participants button and select raise hand if you wish to speak. Once you are unmuted, you will have three minutes to provide your comments. And we do have a couple of hands. Let me get my timer ready here. It looks like we have Aaron Burnett, who will go first here. All right, Aaron, whenever you're ready. Good evening, everybody. Aaron Burnett here, Director of Policy and Civic Engagement at Canal Alliance. Uh, I first of all just want to second Marina's earlier concern regarding uh, being prepared for a Spanish translation for these types of meetings. Uh, and secondly, I want to say, as an employee of Canal Alliance, I'm very familiar with the amazing work being done by Rich and Canal Arts on a daily basis. I consider myself lucky to be able to admire some of the amazing artwork and murals which adorn the walls of our offices. Canal Arts has a proven track record of producing artwork that is culturally significant, appropriate, and welcoming to all. Furthermore, Canal Arts has developed close relationships with local leaders in the Canal neighborhood, including Vosas del Canal. Canal Arts also is a sponsor of uh, Canal, Art, Canal Family Arts Saturdays at the Oro Center. And uh, just to sum it all up, what a better way to invite members of the community to enjoy the proposed new amenities at Pickleweed than to have a mural, a mural at the entryway facade depicting rich and colorful culture and history of the canal neighborhood. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you, Aaron, appreciate it. Additional comments? Are we ready for the next one? Yes, please. Okay, it looks like we have Meg with the Marin Society of Arts. All right. Hi. Thank you. Um, thanks for uh, allowing me to be here and make a comment. Um, I do want to give a little more context to this project. This is very exciting because it is the first opportunity for public art uh, to be utilizing the city's first ever public art policy and procedure. Yeah. For a city yeah. as large and as old as San Rafael, it's amazing that it did not have such a policy or procedure. Um, so th this is very exciting. And we are working hand in glove with the city uh, on the idea of public art specifically in the canal. Marin Society of Artists function in this particular project is to be fiscal sponsor for the county funds. Um, and, and so I wanna to speak to the process again. We really can't get the process off the ground unless we identify location. You can't start to design uh, and you can't really interact with the community. The, the threshold question is location. Um, yeah. So I, I wanna reiterate how important that beautiful wall on the borough center is. Um, the, the funder would care deeply about the, the, the mural's location. Um, mm -hmm. I can't support a public toilet facility for a number of reasons. First of all, putting it there would make it victim of immediate uh, probable graffiti or whatever. It's just too vulnerable. It's not an appropriate surface. It's not a large enough surface. So I am supporting the idea of the borough center wall. Um, and, and to address Funding. It's a fully funded project that is essentially is a gift to the city um, through county funding and our sponsorship. And, and it is compatible with what we hope to be future uh, arts interpretive community-based 
projects along that beautiful shoreline path. We are um, working on funding for additional art interpretive cultural projects along the shoreline path. And this, this would be a lovely companion to the start of that. We do have significant funding lined up for that second project, which is unrelated to this, but in a lot of ways related to it. So thanks for this opportunity. Thank you, Meg. We appreciate you participating tonight. And Becky, the next public comment, please. Yeah, it looks like, let me just check here. It looks like we have Annabelle V, who is next with um, her hand raised. Welcome, Annabelle. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Annabelle. Oh, okay. Um, I'm part of our Voces de Canal, and I'm happy to support uh, the art because it's our community, and welcome to and teaches our community too because it's a gift, and we are happy because. Our kids usually play in the park and I think it's looking beautiful because it's something different and something new for us. And we, we, our wish is everything coming big for Canal. And I think that's the first part to start and our dream is coming more things in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Annabelle. We appreciate your comments. Next, come um, public comment. Yeah, let me see. It looks like we have Aurelia Vargas. Give me just a moment to get her set up here. Okay. Oops. They're jumping around on my screen here. She moved to the top. Okay. All right, you should be ready to go once you unmute yourself. Hi everyone, I speak in, in Spanish. Uh, my name is Aurelia, uh, mi nombre es Aurelia Vargas. Um, yo vivo en el área de Canal. Uh, yo veo el mural que está en Canal Alliance y veo el mural que está en la entrada al llegar a Canal y a mí me parecen fabulosos. Yo considero que debemos de tener más, más murales Yo veo en San Francisco, en Richmond, que hay muchos murales muy hermosos. Aquí considero que debemos de tener unos más porque somos una comunidad de muchos latinos. Y el mural que es, yo, yo consideraría un buen proyecto en el parque porque es donde se juntan todas las familias, todos los niños y es una manera de de expresar nuestras culturas. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Marina, would you be able to translate for us? Please. I think I can translate a little bit if need Thanks. be. Thank you, Nancy. Appreciate that. I, I thanks. I I won't be able to get everything you said, but she, um, from what I understood, she she believes having a mural mural is very um, important, especially in in our community and for families to see. She sees murals in San Francisco and the in in Richmond and how beautiful they are, and she supports having a mural a mural at the park, so families can enjoy the art. Thank you, Nancy. Appreciate that. Becky, additional public comment? Yes, let me see who I had next here. Okay, that was really a, okay. It looks like um, Marina Palma will be next. And let's see. Can you hear me now? You can, yeah. Marina. How are oh you? Oh my God, you know, I was trying to translate, but I wasn't unmuted. Uh -oh. the time. <laughs> you guys didn't unmute me. Um, so yes, I am really excited on behalf of the community and Voces de Canal about this project that has already been funded by, by the county. Uh, like Aurelia and my other colleagues said, uh, we are a community that 99.9% .9 are Hispanics and the community center that we 
you have. I mean, it is definitely pre and, and really, really busy with Spanish speaking clients. I mean, I mean, residents. Uh, I would like you to ask all of you your permission to let us use the wall right next to the main entrance to start with the mural that will be the lead to the next project that we have, in, which is the shoreline. And uh, and uh, we are really excited about this. I mean, the project has already been approved. The community will feel more welcome that we belong a, a little bit more to to this to this county. So please keep it in mind that when you make the decision of allowing us to use this wall, you are making a lot a lot of happy hearts. People are, are going to be very happy. We're going to feel more welcome. The way things are going in the county are no. I mean, they're going well now, but it's not the best place for us. And this will make such a big difference. I mean, we already started with the welcome mural. Uh, we have the mural in Canal Alliance. I know Rich did this beautiful mural in uh, uh, by the hospital. By the hospital also. Uh, I was raised in San Francisco. And uh, being around murals that remind you of your culture, reminds you of your country, of where you come from. And it gives you more energy to move on and continue doing what we're doing. So I will appreciate if you guys will allow us to start this project. Thank you so much on behalf of Voces del Canal and the Canal community. Thank you. Thank you, Marina. Appreciate your input. All right. Thank you. Additional next, comments? Yeah, we have two more, um, it looks like here. Uh, next will be Christina Rosales. <clears throat> Welcome, Christina. And whenever you're ready, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hola, buenas. Yo lo voy a decir en español también. Hola, mi nombre es Cristina y yo pienso que pues tener el mural se vería muy bonito porque todos los niños estarían contentos y la comunidad porque representa pues a la comunidad también y uh, y también pues este le pedimos que por favor pues que lo apruebe porque pues está este es muy importante para toda la comunidad y uh, y para nuestro centro comunitario y para que refleje la comunidad. Y yo pienso que se vería muy bonito porque todos estaríamos muy contentos al ver el mural. Muchas gracias. Mi nombre es Cristina Voces del Canal. Thank you, Cristina. Nancy or Marina, would you be able to interpret, please? Translate. Said the children in the community would love it. Please approve the prod the the mural. It is just such a fundamental part of the community, and especially having it at the community center, everybody would be very really thrilled about it. That's it. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. Appreciate that. Any additional comments? Yeah. Um, let's see here. That was, looks like we have Irene next. Let me go ahead and give her permissions here. Okay, Irene, whenever you're ready, go ahead and unmute yourself. All right, you should, we should be able to hear you now. Irene, there. Yeah. Marina, you you need to get a hold of Irene. Oh. Yeah, it looks like Irene is unmuted. Uh, excuse me, this is Marina. Yes, Marina, Irene is also unmuted too. Oh, I don't know why. Irene, are you there? I think she might be having technical difficulties. Um, mm -hmm. We maybe move on to another one and come back to her. We please? can move on to another one and come back and, and maybe Irene, if you could, Possibly put your comments in the chat as well. We can try that way. 
Um, let me go to the next one, which will be Cruz Vargas. Give me just a moment here. Let's get back over to Cruz. All right, Cruz, whenever you're ready. Hola, buenas tardes. ¿Sí me escuchan? Buenas, buenas tardes. ¿Sí me escuchan? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, mi nombre es Cruz Vargas, soy, pertenezco a Voces de Canal y uh, también apoyo la idea del de el muro, ya que representaría todas las, eh, toda la comunidad en diferentes etnias. Gracias. Thank you. Nancy, would you be able to provide a summary, please? Um, she said that she belongs to the Voices of a Canal and she um, likes the idea of the mural since it will represent the community and the different ethnicities of the community. That's it. Great, thank you. Becky? I think we have made our way through the list. Let's see here. Um, and we're gonna try Irene one more time here. And if you can unmute yourself again, Irene, we can try again. Buenas noches, pueden escucharme? Hi, welcome. Buenas noches, mi nombre es Irene de León. Uh, vengo de Guatemala y también soy parte de Voces de Canal. Um, soy residente de Canal y tengo cuatro niños y me siento muy emocionada. Cada vez que vemos un mural sentimos que nos representa, que representa nuestra cultura, nuestros sueños y la trayectoria de nuestras vidas. Entonces yo también estoy apoyando para que se hagan estos murales, especialmente en el parque, porque ahí uh, se concentran muchas personas, los niños, y ellos pueden saber nuestra historia y es un proyecto maravilloso que nos llena de ilusiones. Entonces um, pido por favor que nos ayuden y que nos aprueben este proyecto. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Nancy, would you mind again, please? Oops, of course. Um, she said that she comes from Guatemala and is part of the Voices of the Canal. She has four children. She loves seeing murals because it represents her culture, it presents her culture, other cultures, the dreams of the community and their trajectory in the community. Um, she, special, she said she would love to see a mural in the park since many kids and families gather there and they can learn from seeing the community, um, seeing the murals. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Becky, have we received any additionals or? We have two more, yes. Okay, um, great. Up next is Chris Para, and whenever you're ready, Chris, you can unmute yourself. I'm ready. All right. Welcome. <laughs> Hi. Um, good afternoon. My name is Chris Pada, and I work with Canal Alliance, and I'm part of the advocacy and policy team. And we work together with both of the canal, and we support the creation of the mural. And personally, I believe this mural is more than a artistic piece that will embellish the place. I think it could be a unique work of art that include a lot of experience of our community or people in our history as an immigrant in the area and reflecting emotions and sensations. The mural, in, the mural on the wall, it will stop being just a wall to become an, a special place that will transmit a message, a history, a history or history in this um, canal area. I use, I believe it could be amazing idea to reflect the, the community, the, the, the center, the center um, serve to our community. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Okay, next will be uh, Marina Caldron. Let me go ahead and... Okay, Marina, whenever you're ready, please unmute yourself. 
Buenas noches. Hola, Marina. Ah, buenas noches, mi nombre es Marina Calderón y también formo parte de Voces de Canal y parte de, del arte también. Y tengo tres niños y cuatro sobrinos, lo cual es pues siempre vamos mucho al parque y nos gustaría ver un mural de nuestras historias en la área que es el, donde está el parque. Eh, cuando uno ve un mural, nuestros hijos preguntan por qué es ese mural, qué representa y es algo muy bonito donde podemos expresar nuestras emociones, nuestras historias, de dónde venimos. Y es algo muy, muy bueno porque nuestros hijos que son nacidos acá pueden aprender nuestra historia, nuestras culturas. Y yo apoyo y pido de por favor que nos puedan apoyar. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much, Marina. And Nancy, if I could push you to work again, please. Of course. Um... She said she's part of Voice of, of the Canal. She has three children and four nieces and nephews. Um, she believes that when a child sees a mural, they ask what it means and what it represents. And it's such a great opportunity to teach children, her children, about their history and their culture. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any additional comments? Yeah, next up we have Isabel. All right, Isabel, whenever you're ready, go ahead and unmute yourself. Reactivar audio. ¿Me escuchan? Hola, Isabel. Hola, mi nombre es Isabel Reséndiz. Uh, yo tengo más de 10 años viviendo aquí en la comunidad y a mí también me gustaría que tuviéramos un mural en el parque, ya que para mí sería uno de los mejor, mejores lugares porque es un punto de reunión de a todas las personas y de todos uh, los lugares. Y representa la cultura y el arte de, de todos. So, gracias. Thank you, Isabel. Um, she said that she's been living more than 10 years in the community. We love a mural at the park because the park is a gathering place. And the, um, the mural can represent multiple um, backgrounds and cultures. Thank you. Becky. And I do not see any more raised hands from our attendees. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for your, your input on this. And I know it, it helps Rich out a lot, too. Um, we do want to let staff have input. So we're going to turn it back over to Craig to finish off for us, please. So, Craig, do you have any comments or? Yeah, thanks, Steve. I just had a couple things. And the first thing I wanted to say is it's it's just so great to to see so many uh, people from the community come out and and comment on this item. It's it's uh, really great to see this process start to come to life. And I, I did just wanted to kind of share, a um, tie back into my initial presentation, a little bit about the process from here to make sure that was clear as well. Um, you know, this is not part, not yet part of the formal review process for the Pickleweed Advisory Committee. So there's no request to take action to formally approve or make any recommendations for this mural at this point in time. That would be coming a little bit later on in the process. Um, what we'll be looking for, uh, for for this proposal will be that that detailed description of the project you know a specification of exactly where that mural would be cited hopefully rich has some good feedback from the community now um, uh, that he's received this evening uh, that he can then take with his group put that proposal together and then submit that to the public art review board and then it would go through the steps that i i outlined earlier in my presentation so i just want to clarify that that will be coming later down the line and what that means is that the pickleweed advisory committee will then hopefully see this proposal come to them uh, at a later date uh, once that's been received and gone through that process so again i just want to say it's really great to see so many comments really i'm, I'm excited about this process moving forward and thanks to everyone um, for all of your uh, your feedback that uh, was given tonight. Really appreciate it. Uh, Steve, I, I have a question. When you, your comments, I didn't understand some of it, and I wonder if you could send it to me. It looked like it was written out 
Sure, I'd be happy to, Rich. Great, thank you. And, and Rich, I just want to thank you. I, I know you've been working on this for an awful long time, uh, trying to get it going, and the fact that the city happened to be working on this policy, I know it's been rather frustrating for you, but um, you know, I, I think you're going to approach this in a, uh, a proper way, and you're actually forging the way for many others, and, and I'm sure more projects from, from Canal Arts in the future, too. So thank you very much for going through this process. Very good. We're, we're in it to win it with you. Right. Right. Good. All right. Thank you, everybody. Now we're now going to move on to the next item before the committee, and that's co-sponsorship application. Uh, we've got Vivalon here. Um, it is recommended, it is recommended the Pickleweed Advisory Committee grant a fee reduction or waiver for use of the Albert J. Borough Community Center's gymnasium or multi-purpose room on Thursday mornings for Zumba classes for older adults from September 1st, 2022 through August 31st, 2023, excluding holiday closures. As a little background, Vivalon, which is formerly Whistle Stop, is interested in bringing an experienced instructor to offer free weekly Zumba classes for older adults at the Albert J. Boyle Community Center. Timing of this proposal loosely coincides with the center's restarting of the Multicultural Older Adult Program on Wednesdays, which restarted today, um, a program canceled during the pandemic. There has been a strong interest in older adult programming in the Canal community. The term of this proposed art project is from September 1st, 2022 through August 31st, 2023. The applicant is requesting a full fee waiver valued at $2,060 for use of the gymnasium on Thursdays during the school year from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and the multi-purpose room during the summer, excluding holidays. Vivalon staff is present to provide a program overview uh, to support their application that the board, the committee is reviewing. Committee members will then have the opportunity to ask question, questions of Vivalon staff. The Pickleweed Advisory Committee has the authority to grant a fee reduction of 25, 50, 75 percent or other, grant a full fee waiver, reject the application, and ask the applicant to resubmit with additional information, or reject the co sponsorship application altogether. Being that this program opportunity has recently become available, the applicant was unable to submit their co sponsorship application during the regular Pickleweed Advisory Committee review and approval cycle. Community interest warrants special review of the application for the committee to discuss and make recommendations at the meeting this evening. The resident nonprofit value of this is, as I mentioned, is $2,060. A fee reduction or waiver would potentially result in lost revenue to the city should a paying program be interested in using the facility at that time. And I'd also, when I welcome Stephanie to, to make her comments right now, uh, is probably somewhat of a reunion for her because as many of you know, she used to work at Canal Alliance and many fellow Canal Alliance employees and, and patrons were on that last issue and commented. So welcome, Stephanie, and it's good to have you here this evening. Thank you, Steve. Um, and thanks to all of you um, for um, taking this um, into consideration. Um, we have already partnered with the community center to deliver um, congregate, also called grab and go meals uh, from the county as part of our um, you know, ongoing in-home delivery service. So we provide meals on wheels for the county and we also provide these congregate meals. One of our sites is, is the Alboro uh, Community Center. So we've already really um, established a relationship in terms of providing um, support and services uh, to older adults in the canal. And we would like to continue to do that um, by bringing um, a class that will provide balance, movement, um, some fun, um, and we have a, um, an amazing instructor um, who is actually from Peru, so she'll be able to uh, provide this class in English and Spanish along with amazing music. She teaches at Vivalon two days a week now, and she's doing one class over in Marin City, uh, also for older adults. And we would just really love to extend um, that class uh, to the Alboro Community Center and to the Canal community. And um, what we have been doing as an organization uh, uh, that had started through the pandemic and we wanna continue doing it as we're hopefully coming out of the pandemic is to provide classes for free. So right now, all of our classes for older adults, whether they're at Vivalon in San Rafael location or in Marin City, this class is offered for free. And so I'm coming to you today to consider um, giving us a waiver such that we can um, provide the class free of charge 
a one morning a week um, at the Alboro Community Center um, to hopefully be maybe one of many um, uh, programs for older adults that we can partner together um, and, and bring to the community. Thank you so much. I'm muted this time. Okay. Thank you, Stephanie. So now we'd like the uh, we'll give the committee members an opportunity to ask any questions they might have or or make comments, and we'll start with Nancy. Thank you so much for this. Um, just quick question: How big are the classes? Um, the classes we for depending on the 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 um, space, but they're typically um, ten to twenty people, and again, it depends on you know turnout. Uh, we, because of the pandemic and slowly reopening, um, we currently have, I think, about 10 individuals who come two mornings a week. Um, the class, we do it as a hybrid class, so that's something else that we could offer. Um, we do have quite a few people who are taking the class um, on Zoom at home. So um, potentially we could make this a hybrid class as well that might increase the numbers for people who are still not quite ready to participate in person um, indoors, but would like to. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think I believe the hybrid idea is actually a great idea as well. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Kate, do you have any questions or comments? I appreciated reading uh, the application and learning more about another opportunity for a different group of people. Um, Steve, I have one question for you, and that was uh, whether there are other co-sponsorship programs Thursday morning. I think I wanted to say that the ESL program was, but I couldn't remember for sure. We or do have a Thursday program. morning, correct, the Parent Service Project, and that is why we would do a, a, a switch. So currently the gymnasium is available at that time. So they would, during the school year when we have the Parent Service Project um, program going, they would use that. Then in summertime when we have camps and stuff in the gym, the multi-purpose room is available. So it's, you know, the, the gym is bigger, but both rooms could easily accommodate this program, and uh, the applicant's been very open for switching. Great. Thank you. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, Rosa, do you have any questions or comments? I think Rosa might be frozen. We're going to let's jump to Louise and we'll come back to Rosa. Louise, do you have any questions or comments? Oh, just <clears throat> an excellent idea, excellent program. Um, if some Vietnamese Americans came, would there be translation for them in addition? Well, that's a great question. So um, at this point, the majority of the class, they're really, um, it, it's, it's very visual. <laughs> so the instructor, right, she's dancing, she's got the music <laughs> going and you're following her. Um, so they're yeah. really, you know, I think we would definitely work to do some translation, but it's not as if someone's gonna be speaking with the class for the whole, you know, hour of the class. So I think it's right. something that um, we could try and figure out. I currently, as I said, the instructor is bilingual um, in Spanish, um, and maybe as far as some introduction, we could we could find a way to translate if we needed to. But the majority of the class is really following the music and the movement and the teacher. So I think it would mm -hmm. be um, something we could definitely uh, figure out. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, Thank I, you. I do. Yeah. I, I would like to note that we had mentioned when we first discussed this, Stephanie and, yeah. and Stephen and I, um, of her possibly coming in and, and giving a free class to maybe the uh, multicultural senior program. Um, yeah. That, as you know, a lot of uh, Vietnamese older adults participate yes. in that. So maybe in, in doing so, they would see how easy it is and it is a follow along as Stephanie just said it. So, uh, Rosa, do you have any questions or comments, Rosa? Uh, uh, yeah, I was reading the, the paper, and uh, normally it says uh, a number of uh, uh, participants, at least eight estimated. Do you think uh, uh, is that is that a very small group, or is it, uh, is it uh, okay to be uh, among, or how do you guys uh, approach the thing? Let's say like right now with the uh, COVID, are they going to follow regulations, or how are they going to uh, take it because for all the people? I had some difficulty hearing that. Can someone? I, I did too. The sound was a little tough. Yeah. yeah. 
It sounded like she was asking about the number of participants and the spaces. Yeah, so um, I, I, I have been to the community center and I feel as though there'd be enough room for social distancing. Um, I know currently the class that we teach, um, no one's wearing a mask, but they are socially distanced or they do, they have the option because that's something you might not wanna do when you're moving around quite a bit. Um, but we do have, it's socially distanced, it's indoors. Um, and at this point, the space, the number of participants really when all is said and done is based on the space, right? So if they have a bigger space, we can have more people. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. You're, you're welcome. Little, uh, sorry about my connection. No problem. Thank you. Okay. And before we go to public comment, Craig, did you have any questions or comments? No, I didn't at this point in time, but thanks for the opportunity and thanks for being here, Stephanie. Okay, Becky, uh, do we have any public comment? Um, if you are watching this meeting through Zoom, please select the participants button and select raised hand if you wish to speak. Once you are unmuted, you will have three minutes to provide your comments. And I do not see any raised hands at this time. Okay, then I will close public comment. And I ask for a motion in a second, please. I move to approve a full fee waiver for the uh, older adult Zumba class for the period of August for, uh, yeah, August 1st, 2022 to, no, September 1st, 2022 to August 31st, 2023. Great. And do we have a second? I second it. Nancy, yes, second. Thank you. And roll call, please. Okay, uh, Nancy Palacios. Yes. Kate Sprague. Yes. Rosa Vasquez. Yes. And Luis Yost. Yes. All right, thank you, motion passed. Great. Stephanie, Woo. thanks for being with us tonight and you got to learn about our public art process and about a potential mural idea. So appreciate it. We look forward to working with you. Please give us uh, the end of this week, early next week, and we'll send you the permit and all that after we get it all entered into our system. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate your support, and I look forward to partnering to bring more programming to the older adults um, in the canal. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay, so now we go on to our next item, which is uh, committee reports and comments. Uh, Kate, did you, is there any updates on the master plan steering committee? No, not at this time. Okay. Um, I'll go through everybody's name just to see if anybody else has any anything to report to the group. Um, Nancy? Mm, not at this time. I know that the, um, the committees have been very active though, the steering committees here in Sun Valley, they, I believe it was this week, they gathered at the park to discuss um, renovations and things like that. So it's very appreciated that the community is getting together and um, voicing their opinions. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, Kate, did you have anything else to comment on other than um, I was thrilled to see the uh, the awarding of the grant to renovate the pickleweed fields and even more excited to see the additional work planned to really um, build out the resources available at the community center and the fields there. That's super exciting to look forward to. Yes, we're all very excited about that. Rosa, do you have any? Oh, pardon me? That's it. Okay, thank you. Rosa, do you have any updates and reports? Not this very day. I'm sorry. Oh, that's good. Thank you. And Louise. Um, can I make a comment? Just one more comment about the murals. Um, again, I want to be. Can you hear me? Uh, you kind of bring. I want to make sure bit. the Vietnamese American community is involved. Okay. I don't know why. We can hear you now. You can hear me now? Yes. Uh, I want to make sure the Vietnamese American community is involved in the mural process. 
That's a good suggestion. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. No other comments. We'll go on to staff comments. Item number six. Uh, I've got an update for you, just to kind of let you know about some of the things we have going on. Uh, things have been busy, especially this week. So uh, uh, we were talking at the beginning of the meeting. meeting for those of you who came out late, we happen to have a fire this afternoon behind the the <laughs> soccer fields, and it just seems like there's been a lot of action lately. But some of the good things that have been going on. We had the free six-week summer camp that we hosted in partnership with Santa Fe City Schools and the YMCA that concluded last Friday and it accommodated oh. 75 school-identified uh, canal children and supported their academic and social-emotional development. So that was great having all those kids here for the six weeks during the summer. Um, our pro program coordinator, Stephen Rogers, started a new Saturday uh, Santa Fe Basketball Academy this summer for kids five and up. And the program was a fun way for kids to be introduced to the world of basketball with drills and games focused on building motor skills and teaching basic basic basketball skills. Um, the fee was fifteen dollars for the whole session, and we're already planning additional sessions uh, and programs for this fall. Our summer junior giants program at Pickleweed Park uh, Athletic Fields had over ninety participants. The free program for youth of all school levels from ages five to thirteen meet on Saturdays and Tuesdays through August 6th, so this Saturday will be the last day. Um, this program is coordinated by Stephen Rogers, our program coordinator, and, and helped out, supported by a number of volunteers. Um, it's, it's a lot of work going through, working with the Giants to set this up and follow their their, their outline, um, but it's, it's a great program for the kids. And it's more than just a baseball and softball program. Through each child's experience, uh, as part of a team, they learn uh, the four basic character developments of confidence, integrity, leadership, and teamwork. Uh, additionally, the program focuses on education, health, and bullying prevention. We're excited that our Open Gym Sports for Adults finally restarted two weeks ago, and it's being held on Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday evenings with drop-in basketball all three days and volleyball on Wednesdays. The Canal Arts, the original Canal Arts, which is the... Uh, Free monthly canal arts program sponsored by the city and offered by the Canal Youth and Family Council continues to be offered from 10.30 to 12.30 on the second Saturday of each month. And the program is supported by the San Francisco Foundation. Our weekly uh, Monday afternoon art program Drawbridge, which this committee co-sponsors, uh, created a beautiful work of art uh, that the children took several months to complete, resulting in a painting of Mount Tamil Pius from San Rafael with native plants and animals. The artwork has been on display in the hallway of the center this summer, and they have a second painting that will be on next week. As the committee is aware, the center regularly displays local art created by programs that utilize the facility, community partners, and of course, the annual showing of the Dia de los Muertos murals. Uh, we had a new ballroom, Latin, and fitness mini camp for youth this summer. Um, it was offered two weeks ago, and the instructor is committed to coming back and leading more youth and adult classes this fall. So pull out your dancing shoes and come join us. Uh, this summer, we also hosted two separate weeks of Volley Start Summer Camp in the Center's Gymnasium. Santa Fe City Schools rented two classrooms for two weeks in July for state testing for ELPAC. San Francisco ran food bank distributions continue on Tuesday mornings in our parking lot. Uh, the city continues to sponsor Marin Health and Human Services COVID vaccination clinics at the center. A clinic was offered yesterday from 3 to 7 p.m. And we have additional J dates this month of August 16th and the 30th that we will be here with pre vaccination. So be sure to get boosted. Um, pause during the pandemic, our Albert J. Boyle Community Center Multicultural Older Adult Program resumed today. The program is being offered on Wednesdays from 10 a.m. to noon uh, for socialization, fun activities such as fitness, games, guest speakers, and arts and crafts. It's run by our center staff and it's supported, uh, and support is being provided by the Santa Fe Library. And later this year, hot lunches will uh, again be offered through a partnership with the County of Marin. Our annual movie in the park here at Pickleweed will feature Encanto in Spanish and will be held on Friday, September 23rd on the soccer fields. There will be three other movies from August to, uh, to October in other Santa Fe parks that everyone is invited to. 
The city is also coordinating a city information fair on the fields at the same time as the movie in the park to connect with the community on various city projects and functions. Dangerous Mortos, we had a meeting right prior to this one tonight. Uh, we've been meeting since March and I've coordinated uh, altars in downtown store windows. We've got a lot of uh, participants that have already gotten back to us wanting to host altars. And we'll also have a car procession again this year through downtown San Rafael on Saturday, October 22nd at 3 p.m. It will start at City Hall and loop down 4th Street, come back to City Hall, and then we will be going to the new Multicultural Center of Marin um, where cars will park and people can hang out and check them out if they'd like to. Uh, as far as the event here on Saturday, November 5th at the Borough Community Center, we will again have altars, art workshops, live music and cultural performances, traditional food, and of course the walking procession through the canal community. Our canal mini soccer league has 156 children enrolled in the summer season of this recreation program. Instruction is primarily in Spanish and meets on Saturdays and Mondays through August 13th. Special recognition, I don't know if she's still on online, but uh, it needs to be given to Marina Palma, who has really over the years put a ton of effort in, in helping make this program a success to the, the youth of the canal. And she also worked with the county to receive an $8,000 grant, uh, which will help support and lowering our already low $25 fee, registration fee for the session even lower. So thank you, uh, Marina, and it'll also help buy some supplies for the program. This week, we are offering a champion soccer camp for youth seven to 12 years of age. Um, it's voluntarily led by a Branson student and recreation division school uh, swim instructor and lifeguard, uh, Rodrigo Diaz. Uh, participants are able to hone their soccer skills while having fun here this week. And as I already mentioned, uh, we are very excited. As I mentioned in that email earlier, or I sent in July, to have the good news regarding Santa Fe's uh, Pickleweed Park Enhancement Project. As you know, for years, we've been seeking funds to convert the uh, weed sports field to synthetic turf and to increase accessibility to the community, along with additional enhancements in the park. Our project was recently selected, as you know, from California State Parks as one of 16 park projects that the state is recommending to the National Park Service for land and water conservation funds. So we're keeping our fingers crossed, but it's really looking good now. Um, we need to give special thanks to uh, Craig and Catherine, they put a lot of effort in this grant, and our friends over in the uh, in the Public Works Department for all of their support. So, in a nutshell, that's what I have, and I will ask if anybody has any comments on my report. We'll start again with Nancy. No comments, but thank you, Steve. You're welcome. Thank you. Kate. Thank you. No questions or comments. Okay. Rosa? Thank you for the information. I don't have any comments. Thank you. Okay. And Louise. Uh, you're on mute, Louise. The date of Dia de los Muertos is November. It is Saturday, November 5th. 5th, thanks. The car procession is on Saturday, October 22nd, two weeks prior. It kind of helps drum up enthusiasm. Um, for the event, uh, kind of marketing. Um, a little bit of history. The, we get a large turnout from outside of the canal, too, that are very interested in supporting the Dia los Morto celebration. And, and through the years, people have commented, why don't you have this procession uh, downtown, San Rafael, and, and, you know, like other people do, right? Uh, the yeah. committee, which is the Multicultural Center Marin, and many uh, volunteers, individual volunteers, strongly believe that the heart of this event is here in the canal. Um, and then when we had to, because of COVID, we couldn't have the walking procession. Uh, so we had the driving procession of the canal in 2020. And so we thought, hey, that would be a nice event to move downtown two weeks prior and still have the walking and the main event here um, in the canal at the Boral Community Center. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Yes. Okay. Um, and Becky, do we have any members of the public who would like to comment on the report? We do have one person uh, as an attendee. If you're watching this meeting through Zoom, please select the participants button and select raised hand if you wish to speak. Once you are unmuted, you will have three minutes to provide your comments. 
and I do not see a raised hand coming up. Okay, thank you, Becky. Mm -hmm. All right, I'd like to note that our next regular meeting is on October 5th, 2020, and look forward to seeing everybody there. And I will now adjourn the meeting at 8.23 p.m. And I appreciate all of you showing up today. Um, I always like getting together here. Good meeting. Yes, thank you. This was a really great one. Thank you. Great. Thank Everybody. you. And Nancy, thank you for helping.